Bible says, I will not die, but to live and declare the glory of God in the land of the living. You are the one that will claim every good thing for yourself. If they say there is going to be doom, say that is not concise you. That is not your own. My Lord Jesus Christ in our life, we become nothing. We become nothing. No Jesus, no anything in our life. And whatever we have, whatever power we have, whatever authority we have today is because Jesus lives in us. Today, I speak with authority of the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus, you will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Of your worldly pleasure, your sliver and your gold, you may pile up all the riches that all this world can do. But the rather my Savior with him in family stand, who oh, I want to be ready to meet him in the glory land. Oh, I want to be ready to meet him by and by. Oh, I want to be ready to meet him on the sky. I want to be more like him to do his best command. Oh, I want to be ready to meet him in the glory land. Amen. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. At the same time, we're coming you to our uh, weekly tonic that is my moment of positive change this year you must have a positive change in your life that situation must change to better in the mighty name of jesus amen let us pray heavenly father we thank you once again for giving us this great opportunity to share your word to your people father lord i submit myself everything my thoughts my understanding to the hands of the Holy Spirit. I pray thee, O Lord, that to minister to everyone, including myself, minister to us on this particular message. And after this message, let there be positive change in our life, so that on the last day we'll be able to reign with you. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you, my brother, my sister. I'm happy to, to see you today. I'm seeing you by faith. You know, because I know you are seeing me, you are looking at me. So I'm happy to meet you again on this platform. As you see the topic, what is life? What is life? This question is being asked by many people. They say, what is life? What is life? That's what people continue to say. People that have died, they ask this question. People that are still living, they are asking this question. What is life? Why are they asking this question? You discover that from the day you were born to this world, you started, like, after crawling, go to school, that day you started struggling. Your parents begin to make plans for you, how you will make it, how you can become somebody, someone in this life. You know, are you too? After you growing up, you are trying to make it, you acquire so many words, you build houses, you buy cars, you get married, you have wives, you have friends, you know big people, big men in this life. You know, but it, it's also a powerful mean and it's painful that with all these things you have acquired, one day they will just say the guy is dead. And they will just take the guy out of his bedroom. The bed that he acquired with a, a very, very expensive bed, blanket, you know, they, they will take him out and go and bury him. It could be in front of his house or they take him to one bush called cemetery. They bury him there. So, and that's the end. So, you see some people that are not even know when he was laboring for all this wealth he acquired. They will begin to declare, they will begin to share it among themselves. At times they fight, begin to fight each other over what someone else have labored for. All these things that you spend the whole of your life to labor for. So now, this question now comes, what is this life about? What is this life about? The life we are living, what is it? 
you know, after laboring, having money, you get this job, you get this certificate, you are a professor, you are a doctor, you are a prophet, you are a bishop, all over the world. At the end of the day, they say the guy is dead and people are sharing your what you have labored for. And you cannot say anything. And you cannot do anything. So what is this life? That mansion that you acquire with a lot of money, they took you out of that and they are burying you where the rain will be falling on you day and night. So what is this life? That's why now come, make me to come and begin to think, what is life really? Let, let's go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. Luke chapter 12, verse 15, verse 16 to 21. Let's see the parable that Jesus Christ said when people begin to ask, what is this like? What is that? Jesus said, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bounds and build greater. And there will be best, there, there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thy his, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required from, of thee. Then what shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. So when I read this particular passage that ah, even somebody laboring, acquiring wealth at the, at the end of the day, you look like you, are, you become a fool, like a fool. So and I think, what can we compare life with? So I decided that life is a loan. And what is loan? I said life is a loan. Then let us see what is loan. What is the definitions of loan? Let's listen. A loan is a debt that an individual or entity incurs when they borrow money from a lender, such as financial institution, corporation, or government, in exchange for the money. The borrower, the, the borrower agree to a set of terms, including interest, finance charges, and a repayment date. That's where I'm going. So, so loan, life is a loan. I compare la life as a loan given to you as a human being, you know, in exchange for, as it's like a money to invest, to invest. So then with, you have to pay back with interest, with interest. But let's ask ourselves, are they are all the people that acquire loan can able to pay the loan back? When they cannot pay it back, what happened? Why can't they pay the loan back? Now, let me give you my own analysis. Your life is a loan given to you. The life you are living. Don't be deceived when they say uh, the gift of life, that life is a gift. Life is not a gift. It's a loan given to you. Don't don't be out of your senses. Be calm to yourself. Calm yourself down and think deep that if it's a gift, you don't need to pay it back. Nobody to need to request it from you back. So life is a loan given to you. Now, who is the lender? God is the lender. God lend you that loan which must be taken back with interest. Now, your terms and agreements is in the Bible, is the Bible where the agreement of the loan God given to you, either you are a pagan, either you are a Christian, or whatever religion you are doing, the agreement of that your life does not belong to you, it is a loan given to you. So, in, you are the one that will now invest that loan as you like. If you like, you can eat it off as you like, and go and cook, you can go and lavish it anyhow. 
So now, uh, but one thing is that the loan must be paid back. If the loan could not be paid back, there must be there must be law that will require you how the money will be getting at the owner of the lender will get it back from you. Now, God is a lender. The agreement, the terms of that loan is in the book in the Bible. The Bible. Let's go to the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. I will reach first 1 to 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I will read first 1 to 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments, which he has commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You know, when you are able to pay your loan back, you'll be able to get a greater amount of other money. You understand? They might even lower the interest because you are a good borrower. Now, first two, and all this blessing shall be called, shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, those are the agreement. If you pay, read those blessings from 1 to 14. From 15, begin to read the courses, if you cannot begin to see the fadid, if you are unable to pay it back, if you are unable to follow the agreement made by God. Ah, you want to say, I don't make an agreement, but you are living. You are living. That life you are living was just borrowed. It was led to you, which must be paid back. Either you like it or not, you will pay it back. Whether you like it or not, you will do all. You will pay it back. And the repayment date, you know, in that divinations of loan that I define for you, there is a repayment date. The repayment, your repayment date is the day that your life will be withdrawn from you. That your life will be taken away from you. That is the day you died. So, you, it will be required as, it was, as we read in that book of St. Luke. Chapter 12. So, I, the guy who talks, I have, more, I have money, I have this, I have that, let me be enjoying myself. As he was trying to enjoy himself, he said, thou fool. So, you want to enjoy it, what we lend you? No, we are taking you out of it tonight. We are withdrawing that thing from you tonight. Um, so, you, you are the one that we ask yourself now, am I a fool or am I a wise man? So that is why we need to live our life with wisdom. You don't just live your life that I mean Mulaye me. Anywhere I can go from Oigo to Moshe, all the parties from Bisonet to Belia. Every every weekend, you don't have time for God. You are just spending your life anyhow. You don't maintain your life. Even your health, you don't maintain it. You are so careless about your life. You are careless about your health, your, your physical health, you are careless about it. Your spiritual health, you are careless about it. Even your emotional health, you are careless about it. You are just lavishing your life anyhow. That is why you see some people, before the even the repayment day, they are the business no more even in existence. Some people die even be, before the repayment day. Because why? They live their life anyhow. Your life is not something you can just use anyhow. Don't say me more like me. I remember when we were in the primary school those days, I we all when we are doing PE, you say, Emi Mola Pa me, Papa, me ja kwa will know me. So that don't think that everything you hold is belong to you can do it. You are a, you are a, you are a government official or you are on the top, you are a rich man, you have power, you are a bishop, you are a prophet. So all those things given to you is not for you. It's not for you. How are you what how are you how are you managing those things that God put into your care? Are you managing it very well? Or you are just doing it anyhow that I can say nobody can question me. Ah, no matter how powerful you are, you'll be questions concerning what you are doing. What you are doing. So don't just say my life, I can use it anyhow. How are you using your loan, which is your life? 
How are you spending your life? How are you using your life? Did you sit down one, one day and plan your life? The time is going on. You are wasting your time. You don't plan, right? If you don't plan the achievement you want to make before the time comes, what would they say about you when you are out of this system? No matter how popular you are in this system, many people are popular than you before. Many people are stronger than you before. Many people carry grace than you before. Many people have carried anointing past you before, but it has become history now. They have passed. They are just passed because they have they are exhausted the loan given to them and they have to pay it back. They have to pay it back. Now, some people spend their loan lavishly and could not pay it back. What happened when you, when you could not pay it back? I will, I will still tell you. Some people careless with the loan given to them and thieves stole it from them. Just stole it from there. I will still explain that to you. Now, those who spend the loan lavishly are those who live their life anyhow and could not fulfill their destiny due to I don't care attitude and could not return the soul to the lender, the one that, that which is God. You know, you cannot, that soul could not go back to God. That is how you lose, the, you, you, you just spend the loan anyhow. Those are the people that just live their life anyhow. They don't take care of what is written in the word of God. They don't examine their life. They don't even think of what they are swallowing, what they are hitting, where they are, the community they are living, the, the best kind of business they are doing. They don't take note that there is an agreement. There is there is there is a closest there is a guidance that should that they should follow, but they didn't follow him. At the end of the day, they lose everything, and God even lose them. That those are the people who live their life carelessly. They could not pay the loan back to God. God that gave them their life. But somebody who live a rightful life, who follow God diligently, meditate in the word, and examine his life to extend even what is eating, take good care. When he's supposed to rest, he will rest. When he's supposed to pray, he will pray. When he's supposed to minister to people, he minister to people. Those are people that are using the quality of their life very well. At the end of the day, the end of back to God and they are welcome back to the kingdom of God. God was so happy to receive them back to his kingdom and when they are able to win so more so and many people have been benefited those that are supposed to fall off of faith through them God have raised them so those are the interest they come with the interest slowly those are the people that will be welcome back so that your life that you talk is yours and you are using it anyhow is a long given to you it will require request back the Crap back from you one of these days, you have to pay it back. Oh, I have money, I have girlfriend, I have my friend, I have this, I have that. One day you will leave all of them and you will go and face where is my loan? The loan is not even worth of collecting back to the kingdom. And they will send somebody who could not pay the money back after they have sold all his property everything yes they criminalize him that he because people will because he, there are a lot of report that he spend it lavishly and he be lock up in internal that will not be your portion that will not be my portion in the name of jesus we will all enjoy internal life not internal hell those that careless with their loan those that careless with their loan with their are those who careless with their life and allow their soul to be stolen by Satan. There are some people that their soul have been stolen away. Some people, because of the wealth of this war, they sold their own soul to hell, to devil. Oh, they promised them heaven and her, and they are doing uh, the, 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 the illegal business. They are doing something ritual, using human blood, deceiving people, making fraudless activities all around. It's like selling that soul to Satan, and Satan stole away that soul. That soul, definitely, the, the kingdom 
We lose that one except they quickly repent and come back to God. Let's go to the book of John, chapter chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. Let's see what is what is there. Because devil come to steal. He come to steal. All those things is, is telling you, ah, if you do this, they will come this, we will give you this for how long? For how long? How many years? That money you that ritual money you are doing. How many years are you going to spend that money? That's that fraud you are doing for how long? It is the deceit of the devil, deceit from her. I read John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comment not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and they might have it more abundantly. So that deceive that devil is giving you is a deceive. He come to steal you, to steal that loan from you. That is to steal your life away from you, to steal your soul from you, and send it to internal hell fire. Those are the things he's doing. So sit down today, examine your life. How am I spending my life? If I'm called upon today, if God called you today, will, will you be... You, will, you, will, will you have a, a good testimonies in the presence of God as you spend your life? Think, since the day you are born, since the day you are born, have you have time to serve the Lord? Huh? Have you been practicing good things? Have you give your life to Christ? Are you born again? Is your name in the book of life? Jesus said, go ye unto the world and preach the gospel. Most of those times, you prefer going to party. Even the party you are, are you preaching the gospel to other people? Are you really managing the life God gave to you properly? Are you managing it properly? Brethren, brother, sister, this is a call unto you. Call to repentance that your life is not your own. No. It is a long given to you. You have to plan it very well. That is why you see those that are wise, they plan their life very well. That's the reason why we go to school. We study our book. Some people learn trade in order to, to be able to, because when your parent is taking care of you, one day you will leave your parent, you'll be living on your own. It shows that you, gradually you are moving to your independence. After some time, you become an independent person. Nobody can talk to you again. You now determine things on your own. You see many people that are in prison today, many people that are one thing or the other, is what they make up their mind to be in life. So whatever you make your life to be, you made up your mind to be in life, is what you will get. It's what we get. So make up your mind today to succeed in life. To have good testimony in life and to have end good end result, a, a result that God will be happy so that we'll be able to pay back to God and God will be able to welcome you back to his kingdom. So, brother, this is a moment of soberness. Soberness. We need to examine ourselves. Even you have a pastor, I'm this, I'm that. Nobody above this message. Your life is alone. Even all those things given to you, you are, as a, you can see vision, you can decree, you can declare, you can say this and it will come to pass. All those things, you are going to cut them. How you spend them? Like you are spent, that you are, you are, you are like, like you are responsible for every cobble spent on that loan. So therefore, brother, sister, your life is a loan given to you by God which must be paid back. The day you die is the day of repayment day. It's the day of repayment day. You know, that is why everybody has different day of payment. The day father will pay his own is quite different to the day mother will pay his own. Then you will now account how you spend your life. Brothers and sisters, let us go and pray. Has go. If you have never given your life to Christ, it will be a new beginning of your life that you don't know before. Now I knew now that this life is not something I can just be spending anyhow. I cannot just not just be talking anyhow. I cannot just be going to anywhere I like. This God asks you to go. Lord, begin to ask God. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Accept me. Forgive me of my sin. Please, Lord, write my name in the book of life. You are a believer. 
So what have you done for your Lord? Are you working for God? Are you taught that, oh, since the day I give my life to Christ, that it's end there? No, hey, you have to move forward. What are you doing for the Lord in that mission you are in your life? How many so have you won to the Christ to, to the Lord since the day you were born again? Brother, come back. You have to, you have to revive, come up with new things from your heart to be doing for God consistently. There is no more time, oh, no more time, oh. The time has come. We have to hurry up, hurry up, come back to the cross of Calvary and and determine to follow our master. And our master will surely help you. He will help me. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord. We miss it in many ways. Even we that we say we are preacher, in many ways we miss it. Lord Jesus, please have mercy on us. We plead for mercy. Oh, Lord, please have mercy on us. Restore us in which, in which area we have missed it in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the strength, the power, so that we'll be able to welcome back into your kingdom. As a good servant, get a pure more dorere, pure more dorere, person who are you know are, pure solo, talk, you know, king, king, of your solo, you know, pupo, it has a good day, that you are faithful in the little, and I will make you to rule over many things, Lord Jesus. This is what we want on the last day, Father. Everything that's still in our life that is not according to your will, forgive us, show us mercy. Those that are saying yes, Lord, accept them, write their name in the book of life, along this kingdom, in your kingdom. Let us remember this message and say, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. My name is Pastor Adekunle Stephen Adedeji, popularly known as Kunle Omala Fionu, from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Fountain of Power, Holy Swagbara, English Rock Yoruba Parish, located at number 11965, Bisonet Street, Suite 1 Horses E. It was in Texas, 77099. That's where we are. You can call me through my phone number, plus one, two, eight, one, eight, five, seven, three, six, five, eight. Jesus is Lord. The Bible says, I will not die, but to live and declare the glory of God in the land of the living. You are the one that will claim every good thing for yourself. If they say there is going to be doom, say that is not concise you. That is not your own. My man, Jesus Christ in our life, we become nothing. We become nothing. No Jesus, no anything in our life. And whatever we have, whatever power we have, whatever authority we have today, is because Jesus lives in us. Today, I speak with authority of the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus, you will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ.